Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Thursday, June the 9th, 2022, and welcome to day six of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. So it's now 6 a.m., and I spent the evening last night camped here at the Chiefswood Park within the Six Nations of the Grand River First Nations Reserve. Had a pretty good sleep last night. Things were nice and quiet and peaceful here. It did rain a fair bit, but uh, it seems like the rain has mostly stopped now, and there's a chance of rain this afternoon, but I think this morning things should be relatively dry. So all my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside the canoe. So the time is now 7 a.m. and I'm ready to get inside and begin day six of paddling down the Grand River. Starting from Chiefswood Park, my journey down the river today will include one short portage, which is situated in the community of Caledonia. My accommodation for this evening is a campground that's located just upstream of Cayuga, which I estimate will be about 29 kilometers of paddling. So as I paddle along, I can see some mist rising off the water and it's a pretty cloudy day, but seems like some of those clouds might clear out of the way. So just paddling past a dock which has a pontoon boat and a bunch of sea dews So it's now 7.40 a.m. and I'm starting to get pretty hungry, so I'm planning on eating my breakfast as I let the canoe float down the river. There's virtually no wind today, and the current in the river is practically negligible since the river got wide, but I figure a little bit of drift is better than no drift as long as I'm drifting towards my destination. I've been noticing lots of homes built along the river along here. So since leaving Brantford yesterday, the terrain that I've been paddling through is what's considered a Carolinian forest, and that's a forest which has almost entirely deciduous trees. So in other words, no evergreen trees. And I've been noticing that, you know, the, the ground is very muddy and, and there's not really any rock. Uh, whereas earlier in the trip, things were a lot more rocky and we did see, you know, a combination of deciduous trees as well as coniferous trees. Well, despite the clouds overhead, it's actually quite a nice morning to be out here on the river. The temperature is really comfortable and the water is nice and calm. Over here on the left, I'm paddling past what looks like a seasonal trailer park. I'm trying to identify that thing that's climbing up the side of the hill there. Is that one of those remote control lawnmowers, maybe? Yeah, that's what I think it is. That's a pretty good application for it, to use it to mow the steep side of that hill. Well, I don't see anybody operating it, so it might be a robot controlled, like the same way that a Roomba works. I'm now just paddling past the mouth of Big Creek, which is a left tributary of the Grand. So I've now paddled about 7.7 .7 kilometers, and over here on the left side I can see another seasonal campground. So the time is now 9 a.m., and as I've been paddling this morning, the territory over on my right has been part of Six Nations of the Grand River, and for most of the morning, the territory over on my left has been part of Brand County, but I've now just crossed the municipal border and entered into Haldeman County. Haldeman County stretches all the way from here down to Lake Erie, which means I'll be spending the rest of my trip within this county. Up ahead in the distance, I can see some bridges across the river, which is an indication that I'm getting pretty close to the community of Caledonia, which I'll be visiting next. So right here, I'm just paddling past the float plane, and I'm getting pretty close to this first bridge here, which carries the Highway 6 Caledonia Bypass. So it's now 9.37 a.m., and I paddled 11 and a half kilometers so far today. So up ahead, the next bridge is a railroad bridge, and I can also see some white buoys in the water, which are warning me of the Caledonia Dam, which is just beyond the bridge. And a sign telling me there's a portage route over here on the left. So this old railroad bridge is for CN Rail Line's Hagersville subdivision. And that train line actually follows a really similar pathway as the river. And I only know that because over the last two days, several times while I've been paddling, I've been able to hear a train whistle in the distance. So here I've reached the beginning of the portage route for the Caledonia Dam. The current Caledonia Dam was built in 1980 at a location just downstream of an original 1835 dam and lock, which were constructed by the Grand River Navigation Company. While commercial navigation of this section of the river ceased by 1879, when this new dam was built, they incorporated provisions for a potential future boat lock, which has never come to pass. I've just noticed that I'm not the only person doing this portage today. In fact, I'm not even the only person doing it with a green canoe. So I had a chance to speak to these guys and they're actually doing a pretty similar trip to what I'm doing, except they're doing it in individual segments. Last summer they started up at the Elora Gorge, just where I started. And since then they've been coming back and doing little 20 kilometer segments here and there. 
So I was commenting to them that everything that I've seen so far on my trip, they've already seen, and everything that's still ahead of us, neither of us have seen. And here comes a freight train emerging from the trees to go across this bridge. Moving very slowly though right now. It may have just started its journey from somewhere within Caledonia and hasn't really picked up speed or maybe with the age of this bridge they're required to go slowly across it. Looks like the train is carrying mostly tanker cars with a couple of flatbeds. And that's the train whistle that I've been hearing for the last couple of days running within the vicinity of the river. So I've now got the canoe and all my stuff moved down to the bottom of the portage, but I've actually got the canoe locked up here because having never visited Caledonia before, my plan is to walk over that way and explore it a bit. So in Caledonia, they have this nice trail following along beside the river. So I follow this trail further down the river and I'm starting to get closer to the downtown of Caledonia. So here I've now made it to Argyle Street, which I believe is the main street here of Caledonia. Now it's still far too early for me to stop for lunch, but I'm gonna take this opportunity while I'm in Caledonia to stop at a grocery store to stock up on a few things. That's a pretty unique looking church. So after a short walk, I found my way over to the Food Basics grocery store, which is just next to the old Caledonia Grand Trunk Railway Station. So I've got my groceries and I'm heading back to the canoe and I decided to take a little bit of a different route to get back. Caledonia seems like a nice little town. So I made it back to the canoe, now to get back inside and keep on paddling down the Grand River. So it's now 11.25 and I'm back on the water and ready to keep on paddling. This here is the first fast moving water that I've seen since the beginning of yesterday. Socializing with the Canada geese over there, that's the first mute swan that I've seen on this trip. So up ahead here I'm about to pass under the Argyle Street Bridge, which was built way back in 1924. This style of bridge is called a concrete bowstring arch bridge, but they're also commonly called rainbow arch bridges. I've actually seen quite a few bridges of this design throughout my travels on this trip, but this one is actually the longest of all of them. And not only is it the longest concrete bowstring through arch bridge on the Grand River, but it's actually the longest in all of Ontario. Get a good look at it now though, because sadly this bridge has been approved for demolition and replacement, so it won't be here for too much longer. I'm just paddling past the Caledonia Fairgrounds over there on my left, and it seems like the sun is coming out here briefly. We got some blue sky over here on the right. So it's now 11.45 and I paddled about 15 kilometers and since leaving Caledonia I can definitely feel there's current in the river, much more so than before the dam. And I also have a favorable tailwind right now which is also really nice. I really wasn't expecting more of this fun fast moving water. I was kind of expecting it to be deep and boring for the rest of the way since I left Brantford. That's a very unusual parking spot. Up ahead on the left I can see some buildings peeking through the trees and I believe those are part of the community called York, Ontario. The Ontario city that we now call Toronto was originally called York and there are also a couple of other places around Toronto that are still called York. This York here is obviously a different one though. You can see a, some type of a canine creature over there on the other bank looking across at me. Looks too big to be a fox. I suppose it could be a coyote. I guess it also could just be a statue. <laughs> okay, yeah, just a statue. There's another one over here as well. So there's a bridge across the river here in York for Haldeman Road 9. The time is now 12.45 and I paddled 21 kilometers so far today. So as far as I know, they don't have any restaurants here in York, but I decided to pull the canoe out of the water and I'm thinking that I might just have a picnic lunch here in this park. And I just figure it's, you know, a good opportunity to get out of the canoe and explore a little bit because I've never been to York before. You can also see that there's a general store across the street where I might stop in and buy a few things. So I was just learning here that this park used to be home to an old flower and grist mill, which used the power of the water from the river. So from the general store, I got myself some orange juice for tomorrow and also some candy to snack on. And for my lunch, I'm gonna be eating uh, this cucumber that I bought back at the grocery store in Caledonia. And I'm also gonna make a peanut butter sandwich with the loaf of bread that I bought in Caledonia to replace the one that the raccoon stole. So feeling refueled, I'm back in the canoe and ready to keep on paddling down the river. So from that overcast day that we started with, it's actually turned into a really nice, beautiful, sunny day. 
I was expecting there might be rain this afternoon. So I've really been enjoying paddling through this part here. There's lots of islands and lots of different pathways between them to choose from. Over here on the right, I can see some farmland. There's lots of farmland along the Grand River, but a lot of it's hidden by trees along the way. So straight ahead, I can see a railway bridge that I'll be paddling under. And beyond it, I can see the first wind turbine that I've seen on this trip. And I believe that is one of 67 wind turbines, which belong to a project called Grand Renewable Wind. So this bridge was built for the Canadian Southern Railway, which opened in 1872. And I was reading that that railroad had a derailment back in 1902, right here at the Grand River, with 10 railroad cars falling into the river. And I was just noticing that it's actually two separate railroad bridges which share the same foundations. And that's probably because this started off as a single set of tracks and eventually they doubled it. Up on top of the bridge I can see some vegetation growing. This line was sold to CN and CP back in 1985. And after that it was gradually phased out of service. I'm now paddling past the part of the river that has some cottages on it. So the place where I'm going to be camping tonight is called Sun Retreats Cayuga, and I can see over here on the left some of the seasonal campsites that are part of that park. Up ahead there I can see an old railroad bridge as well as a water tower, but those are things for me to go and see tomorrow because over here is where I'm going to be camping tonight. So I've got all my stuff transferred over to the land, now to go and find my campsite and get checked in. This seems like a really big park. There are trailers as far as the eye can see. So I'm now officially checked in. My campsite is right here, and the canoe is parked just back there behind me, so it shouldn't be too far to carry my stuff. So I can see some dark clouds overhead, and the forecast does still stay there's a chance of showers this afternoon, so my first order of business now is to get my tent set up. So I've got the tent set up now with all my stuff put inside. And it's only about four o'clock, but I'm already starting to feel hungry. So I think I'll have an early dinner tonight. Now the community of Cayuga is about two kilometers further downstream of here. And it would be possible for me to walk there or canoe there for that matter, to have my dinner in Cayuga. But I actually visited that community a couple of years ago on a bike tour. And although it would be nice to visit again, I think I'm just gonna stay at my campsite tonight and enjoy some of my packaged foods. So I'm gonna start off with this can of mixed vegetables. Then I'll have this Chef Boyardee beefaroni. I've also got some of these leftover ginger snap cookies from day one of this trip, which I better eat before they completely turn to crumbs. So it's now 7.30, and we've been lucky to have not had any rain yet this evening, at least not so far, um, but it has been fairly windy. Uh, so after I finished my dinner, I just decided to get inside my tent and relax a little bit. So I've just been sort of taking it easy this evening, um, but I'm back up again now, and I think I'm gonna go and have a shower now. So now it's time for my nightly ritual, which is to prepare my overnight oats for the next morning. I've already given this container a thorough washing, using some soap of course, and I'm going to pour in the mixture of dry ingredients. If you ever like to try making overnight oats yourself, I have a separate video on YouTube which will show you the recipe and how to assemble that. And now all I need to do is add in some clean drinking water to the mixture. And I like to stir it a little bit to make sure that I have the right amount of water. That seems to be about good. And then so that I don't lose this spoon so it's easier for me to find tomorrow, I just submerge it inside there, put the lid on, and leave that inside my food barrel overnight. And then in the morning, uh, when I'm ready for breakfast, all I need to do is open it up and the oats will have absorbed the moisture. And I find that it's always a very filling and energizing breakfast to have. So that will wrap things up in terms of day six of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. Uh, my total paddling distance today was 29.1 kilometers and I enjoyed the paddling today because it had some variety to it. Uh, things started off very much the same as yesterday with a very wide river uh, with not really any current on it and no islands or anything and it actually felt more like a lake uh, for parts of it. Uh, but once I got through that, uh, once I got past Caledonia, it sort of morphed into a whole different river and it was kind of a throwback to what I had seen 
earlier in the trip when there was islands and sort of fast moving sections and you had to sort of you know pick your your line through so you wouldn't get stuck you know on the bottom uh, so yeah I enjoyed sort of that and the variety of it and I also liked uh, getting to stop in at, uh, at Caledonia and at York um, and you know more so I obviously spent more time uh, in Caledonia and uh, that's one of the things I'm really appreciating about this trip is that I'm getting to see lots of small little towns that I've you know never visited before uh, I've seen a lot of rural Ontario towns uh, you know on my previous canoe trips but especially uh, on my my bike trips that I have done in the past <laughs> as the wind almost blows my camera off I better wrap things up for this recording here well I'm glad I got inside the tent when I did it's really pouring out there and quite windy as well the tent is like flexing I'm also really glad that this came when I was you know in the tent and not you know out on the water paddling like you know I spent so many hours in this trip out on the water it's really good that uh, this isn't happening while I'm out on the water <laughs> that is quite the storm Hope you enjoyed joining me for day number six of this trip if you watched all the way to the end of this video i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below and thanks for watching